Now, if you're one of the many people who feel uneasy at the prospect of building more and think I'm in danger of overstating the case, I have a final thought. One very close to home. This is Ashdead in Surrey, where I grew up. Quintessential leafy southeast England. It's good to touch the green, green grass of home. Today, I'm coming back for the annual Village Day, a festival of candy floss, dog shows, and good old fashioned entertainment. I've got to land it on the red dot. But that's impossible. Okay, I've just got a little bit weighed up. Got to push it more to the right. I've got to push it quite a bit harder. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Not close enough. Great stuff. I'm afraid my hands are a bit wet, actually. <laughs> it's just like old times, and that is rather the point in a way. <laughs> Never win. So this is where I was brought up. This was the local recreation ground, the rec spent many happy hours here. But for many of my childhood years, Ashdead lived in fear. It had a nightmare vision, and that nightmare was called the M25. Hadn't been built then, of course, but it was set to come very close to here. Now, pretty well, everybody I knew thought whatever motorways the Southeast needed, they didn't want one close to Ashdead. When the M25 orbital motorway around London is completed, it will be 118 miles long, and a journey that now takes six hours will be cut to two. When the route of the M25 had been announced, it brought uproar right around the southeast. The ceremonial opening of a motorway inquiry. And the good people of Ashdead and Leatherhead rallied to the cause. The Transport Minister will have to decide whether or not the M25 Leatherhead interchange goes ahead. We were fired up by what was going to happen to our environment here when they changed the route of the motorway from several miles out to bring it in between Ashton and Leatherhead. It really got our dander up because they were going to impact on so much that we hold dear. John Earl was one of Ashstead's original protesters a pillar of the community who became an unlikely rabble-rouser. We got emotional about what was happening to us. Like British Bulldogs, we were going to shake this one until it stopped. What was the most outrageous thing you did? I suppose disrupting the inquiry at Bookham with foghorns, those compressed air things that make a lot of noise, and nasty smells, and generally... Smells as well as noise. Smells as well, yes. Stink Being bombs. Yes, being a chemical engineer, you know about these things, so, yes. Uh, looking back on that, am I ashamed? Not really, no. When you get excited about what you're trying to do, you'll do anything to stop and make people listen. But John lost his rather admirable battle. Ashdead got a brand new Junction 9, and the South East got its orbital motorway. Now, some people are saying, that the road is a disaster. I must say, I can't stand those who carp and criticise when they ought to be congratulating Britain on a magnificent achievement and beating the drum for Britain all over the world. 
Here's the thing that strikes me whenever I'm back. Things are just the same. The M25 is far from perfect, but the world didn't stop turning, and Ashdod wasn't ruined. That's my personal feeling, but what about theirs? So I want to ask you a question, so listen carefully. If I could click my fingers and at a stroke remove the M25, so obviously you wouldn't have the noise, and obviously you wouldn't have the motorway to get around. Can I just see how many of you would like me to click my fingers and move, remove the M25? How many of you would like to keep the M25? Yes! Very interesting. Well, those votes will be taken into account. Could you click your fingers and hope it went away? I think, to give you an honest opinion, I, it's got to stay where it is. I, I wouldn't click it away because the amount of traffic has increased so much. I mean, the roads around here, when the motorway's got a problem at these local junctions, it's gridlock around Ashton, Epsom, Leatherhead. In a, in a twinkle of an eye, you, you know when suddenly it happened on the motorway because all the streets fill up, people are piling off the motorway. Even the local band are called Junction 9, in honour of the motorway. And I think there's something encouraging here, because what a trip to Ashdod reminds me is that while humans often instinctively resist change, when that change eventually comes, we rise to the challenge. So with infrastructure, you find a community adapts itself to the infrastructure around it. They don't want anything new, but give them something new, and they'll adapt to that, and then be perfectly content. And it seems that's what's happened here.